DeepSeek just went viral on GitHub with a new open source AI that can read massive documents and squeeze a thousand words down to a hundred, basically turning text into tiny visual snapshots. Sheng Shu just dropped a new video model to rival Google's VO3. It lets you stitch faces, props, and scenes into full cinematic clips in seconds. Google built an AI that can see cancer mutations by turning DNA into pictures, and Kohler made a smart toilet that analyzes what you flush, the first AI that truly knows your crap from your data, so let's talk about it. Let's kick off with DeepSeek OCR, because the buzz was instant. The model dropped open source yesterday afternoon and racked up well over 4,000 GitHub stars overnight, and the headline is bold and very specific. Take a thousand word article, compress it into roughly 100 visual tokens, and keep about 97% of the information. That flips the usual long context math. Instead of throwing piles of text at a tokenizer and paying the token tax, they render text as images, run it through a vision encoder, and hand the LLM a compact stream of vision tokens. Now, throughput matters, and DeepSeek put a flag in the ground. A single NVIDIA A100 can process on the order of 200,000 pages per day with this pipeline. That's the kind of rate data teams actually care about when they're building pre-training sets, RAG Corpora, or compliance archives. The project ships on Hugging Face and GitHub under DeepSeek AI slash DeepSeek OCR with runnable code for NVIDIA GPUs, PDF helpers, and acceleration tips via VLLM. The overall model capacity clocks around 3 billion parameters, but the design is split. A deep encoder of about 380 million parameters produces the compact visual tokens, and a text generator sits on a mixture of experts language model with roughly 3 billion total parameters and around 570 million active at a time. Sparse activation keeps the compute bill lean while still giving you headroom in the MOE. Benchmarks are where this stops being just a vibe. On OmniDoc Bench, DeepSeek OCR beats GOT OCR 2.0 which needs roughly 256 tokens per page, while DeepSeek hits the same task around 100 vision tokens. Miner U 2.0 often climbs past 6,000 tokens per page for dense docs. DeepSeek stays under 800 for comparable complexity. If you care about the exact math, that's roughly 61% fewer tokens than GOT, and roughly 87% fewer than Miner U in the scenarios they published. There's also the Fox benchmark, focused on dense PDFs. The paper reports strong results there too, which is good news for labs dealing with equations, diagrams, and layout chaos. Training data breadth also backs this up. We're talking roughly 30 million PDF pages spanning about 100 languages, with around 25 million of those in Chinese and English, plus about 10 million synthetic diagrams, 5 million chemical formulae, and 1 million geometric figures. Outputs aren't one-size-fits-all either. You can preserve formatting, dump plain text, or emit general image descriptions. That flexibility makes it easier to bolt this into downstream tools without ripping out your current pipelines. Andrea Carpathy chimed in, called it a good OCR model, and highlighted the interesting bit, a computer vision system masquerading as a natural language person. In his view, letting LLMs ingest images first, even for plain text, simplifies everything. No Unicode edge cases, no byte-level gremlins, fewer security foot guns. Bu Saining from NYU echoed that line of thinking. Treat OCR as one stop on a bigger road where vision and language share one highway. There is some background noise to be fair. U.S. companies and officials have questioned parts of DeepSeek's cost claims on earlier work that debate will run its course. But what matters today is that seven to 20 times token reduction across history windows is a lever you can actually pull. And a single A100 doing 200,000 pages a day is a lever your finance team can love. All right, shift gears to video because Xing Shu's Vidu Q2 just made reference to video is of a gamble and more of a dial, the pitch. Upload up to seven reference images, faces, scenes, props. Blend them with a text prompt and the system keeps each element consistent across the generated clip. It also does transitions from just a first and last frame, which gives editors more narrative control without shot-by-shot -shot prompt gymnastics. There's an API from day one, so studios can wire it into asset managers and pipelines 
instead of babysitting a web UI. The interesting part is real-world sturdiness. Yikai tested it with a very specific factory scene, a blade battery module riding a conveyor in a Chinese EV plant, a Sayasun yellow industrial robot scanning it, and a screen in the background displaying real-time yield. 99.92 in simplified Chinese. Vidu Q2 fused the battery, the robot arm, the Sayasun logo, and the Chinese text into one stable shot and kept the characters clean frame to frame. The same prompt broke VO 3.1's rendering of Chinese text and Sora 2 mistakenly swapped the logo to Nissan. That reliability on logos and non-Latin text is a big deal for brand work and regional campaigns. In a second test, they staged a meeting room in Shanghai. A chairman asks in Chinese with an angry expression, the battery caught fire, are you messing with me? And a US CEO replies in English, not me, it is them. Vidu Q2 nailed the angry facial expression via references and kept lip sync accurate in both languages. Reviewers said the audio's emotional tone felt flatter than VO 3.1. So Vidu still leads on voice nuance. Not me, it is them. But Vidu's multi-entity consistency and bilingual lip sync were competitive. Essentially, the AI pulled off a bilingual argument. Somewhere, Duolingo just started sweating. Context on Shengshu, the company spun up in March 2023 out of Tsinghua's Institute for AI Industry Research, launched Vidu 1.0 last April, and now claims roughly 30 million users across more than 200 countries with over 400 million videos generated. Today's tool generates 5-second and 8-second 1080 pixel clips from text in Chinese or English and from images. With Q2's multi-entity consistency and prompt to transition trick, it's clearly targeting creative teams who need control, not just shock value. Factor in the API, faster turnaround, and more approachable pricing compared with Sora 2 and VO 3.1, and you've got a credible, good enough plus reliable play for commercial work. Now from cinematic control to something way more serious, cancer detection. Google Research and UC Santa Cruz built Deep Somatic, an AI that reads cancer genomes like Deep Variant on steroids. It spots the tiniest mutations in DNA. Single nucleotide changes and small insertions or deletions the kind that can completely change how a tumor behaves. The clever part is how it looks at data. Instead of reading raw DNA text, Deep Somatic turns it into images. It stacks genetic reads like pixels and lets a convolutional neural network decide what's real and what's noise. That design works everywhere. Illumina, PacBio Hi-Fi, Oxford Nanopore. No retraining, no platform drama. They trained it on a dataset called Castle, six paired tumor and normal cell lines sequenced on all three platforms. On Illumina, Deep Somatic hit about 90% F1 for Indels. The next best tool barely hit 80%. On PacBio, it cleared 80% while others stayed under 50%. That's a big gap. It also found 10 new variants in pediatric leukemia cells that other tools missed, picked up known mutation drivers in glioblastoma, and even worked in tumor-only cases where clean samples weren't available. For labs, that means one model, three platforms, better accuracy and faster turnaround, fewer missed calls, fewer headaches, and really, it's the first time Draw Me a Picture is something your genome actually wants to hear. And now, the product guaranteed to spark dinner table debates? Kohler's Dakota. It's a toilet-mounted camera that uses AI to analyze waste for hydration, gut health patterns, and traces of blood. Price lands at $599, with a subscription between $70 and $156 per year, depending on plan. Pre-orders are open, with shipments starting on October 21, 2025. The hardware setup is surprisingly practical. It mounts over most toilet rims with widths between 32 and 58 millimeters and needs at least six millimeters of clearance under the lid. The camera sits inside the rim, pointing down into the bowl. Kohler calls the optics discreet, and the field of view is deliberately scoped to the contents, not the bathroom or the person. For multi-user homes, 
There's fingerprint authentication and separate profiles. Beta uses end-to-end -end encryption. Power comes from a rechargeable battery that lasts about a week and charges over USB-C, which also handles updates. The companion app turns each session into trend lines and daily summaries. It flags irregularities so people can talk to a clinician before small issues become big ones. There's one notable caveat. Kohler says darker toilet bowls can throw off the sensors because the system relies on light reflection. The device sits firmly in the premium wellness tier right next to high-end wearables, and it follows a broader pattern, home fixtures picking up quiet preventative monitoring my competitors exist, like Throne, but Kohler's manufacturing pedigree plus a new health division give it a mainstream shot. And yeah, the privacy question is real. Kohler is leaning hard on optics design and on device scoping to calm people down. Flush with features was sitting right there, but I'll just say the product is very committed to downstream analytics. That's the download for today. Thanks for hanging out. See you in the next one.